we just got our first proper look at the Emerald Coast on EW's livestream today. We got to see everything from a flyover of the map, all the different biomes, animal features, and even rare features, and we'll be going over all that today. But the first thing I want to do is just take a look at the flyover. I'm going to speed this up so we can get through all of the different areas as quickly as possible, so if you ever wondered what it looks like when Jackson Beard raps, this is going to be about it. But we get to see, first of all, the Outback biome, I think what everybody probably first thinks of when they think of hunting in Australia, it's a more kind of deserty map, hot and arid type of climate, really really cool looking from above, I wish that was something we would actually get to see while playing in game, but cool that we get to see it in this environment. Then we kind of move into the forest and naturally from above, there isn't a whole lot to actually look at because you've got this incredibly thick canopy, where other than seeing cliffs and lakes and stuff, it pretty well hides everything underneath, and you can only imagine what it's going to be like hunting in that area. Lots of probably listening for calls, trying to scan forward as much as possible, but in all likelihood, there's going to be a lot of close quarter encounters. We move through this area out by the river. It's almost like a transitionary area. You don't have as thick of trees, a lot of kind of younger tree growth as you go along the river. It looks like a really cool spot. I'm imagining this river being full of, we got to see fallow deer drinking, probably hog deer, maybe sandbar and rooster deer if they have drink times. I just think that's going to be a really cool spot, but I think maybe the thing everybody was most excited to see was what I'm going to call the mangrove forest, because that's when we get into the animals, because Jaxie gave us a very close look at the crocodiles. It starts with an up-close look at this female croc, which I really love the models, I think. The gators were very detailed over on Mississippi. I think the crocs are even more so, but more importantly than this, a little while later, we got to see an aggressive croc, and that's the thing that I'm most excited about with the changes to behavior from how the gators were to what the crocs are now. Having aggressive ones, just the idea of going along, hunting for magpie geese or rooster deer, what have you, and suddenly a croc's charging right at you? That is such a cool concept. I love to see it. We get to see, obviously, the model up close in the harvest screen as well. I just think Bantanger going to be one of my absolute favorites. It is going to be hard to top crocs, though. They are just so, so cool looking. But from here is when the stream got really interesting, because Jaxi was able to spawn in a bunch of the new species, and they weren't all exactly common which was really cool to get to see up close. So the species kind of showcase started with sandbar deer, and I just love the look of them. The antlers are so clean. It's the general frame shape you'd expect from a sandbar deer. And we got to see a couple of common variations, but how about an albino and a piebald sandbar deer? It was really neat to get to see them. I love what the piebalds look like. I think they are incredible. And the idea of seeing an albino walking around out in this kind of Australian rainforest, that makes me want to go and hunt the map, basically non-stop until we find one. Then we moved to Rusa deer, and I think of the new deer species, these may be my favorite after what we saw today. So we got to see a common, I'm guessing a fairly young buck, a fairly low level buck just based on the size, because what came after that was a monster piebald Rusa, and this confirmed what I was hoping for, in that Rusa deer are going to get really good sized. And I don't know if this is a diamond or not, they may get even bigger than that, but if that's what a diamond Rusa deer looks like, I will be super pleased. It looks so good, I'd focus more on the pie bone pattern, but look at the antlers on that guy. That's all I ever could ask for for Rusa deer. If you saw something like that walking around on the Emerald Coast, it would just be insane, and I'm super excited now to hunt for some diamonds of those. We have all of these different species in the Hunter Call of the Wild, throughout trophy lodges and stuff. Rusa deer and sandbar are rather unique, and I think having a bunch of those on the wall is really going to add some variety. And speaking of variety, there was more than just one piebald pattern shown for the Rusa deer. We got to see a second one, and the way Beard was talking, I'm not so sure there's only two. He said he wasn't going to show more, he was going to leave it up to the creators in the early access period. By the way, that starts this Friday, so I'm super excited to try to hunt for something that looks like that, because that is stunning. But there may be even more than these two. I love what they've done though, that back one might actually be my favorite. Now as I'm sure many of you guys are aware, 
I was able to collaborate with Expansive Worlds earlier this week in their Untamed Species series, and we got to take a look at the Bantang, and getting to see them up close for that Untamed Species video was really cool. But there was one thing we didn't get to see, and that was a rare Bantang, and Jaxie was able to show that off, and I, I don't know what to say. I don't think we've ever seen the rare showcase like this before, but it's so hard to even pick one from the sandbar deer we just saw. The Rusa Pie Balls are incredible, but I mean, an albino Bantang? I can't think of a trophy that I would spend more time trying to get than that. And you see it with them too, the musculature through the neck and the shoulders, even into the hindquarters. I love, like, look at the neck. You see the folds there in the skin? It's little details like that that make these things come alive, and my goodness, do these ever look amazing. I love them in Classic. They genuinely look a hundred times better in Call of the Wild. They are just perfect. But moving on to the next showcase, we finally got to see the Stubble Quail up close. And of course we got to see the commons. They look like probably as you'd expect most quail to look like. But then we also got to see an albino. And as Jaxie said on stream, this is probably for a lot of us the only albino quail we'll ever see. They most likely like Bob White Quail are going to be insanely rare, but it is really cool to get to see it up close. Gotta say it would look amazing in the lodge. Just the odds of finding something like that are not that high. I'd love to, and they do look really cool. Then we got a look at the hog deer. And as you guys know on streams, I've been talking about it for probably nearly a month now since we found out hog deer were going to be on the map. These are the ones that I've been most looking forward to seeing what a good one looks like. And eventually Jaxi would shoot, I think, two of these in the stream, and they ended up being level four, so they're going to get even bigger than this. But one thing we didn't see with the hog deer were any rares. Jaxi said specifically he wanted those to be discovered by the community, and you can only imagine then how good those rares must look if he decided not to show them on the stream with some of the most amazing looking rares in all of Call of the Wild, to be honest. So, I love the look of these things, we see four different common variations here, and also what we got to see was a little bit of a test of the 22250. So he basically made a single long shot on a hog deer from just a couple of meters away, and it still took quite some time to bring it down. Now he also did say for animal classes 2 to 4, the 22250 would be, you know, kinda decent. I don't know if that was saying the gun itself is going to be classes 2 to 4, but it definitely feels like, you know, more of a class 2 or 3 rifle with the ability to take down bigger stuff, just maybe not as well as your typical class 4 to 8 rifles. And that would more or less wrap up the showcase of some of the new species here on the Emerald Coast. Jaxi did actually take a sandbar deer with the 22250, so that was pretty wild to see. That Dusky Gradient is a really interesting name for a fur type, but I do like it. Kind of similar to the Dusky Kudu in a way you've got that darker fur towards the shoulders up through the neck and then lighter fur towards the back of the animal. But I like what we're seeing. That is a level 4 there, so potential for them to get considerably bigger depending on how big that level 4 is, but I like it. I really like what I've seen from this map. It was quite cool to get to see all the rares on EW's livestream there, and I am super stoked for early access on this Friday. But I think on that note, that's going to do it for this video. So as always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.